What kind of pressure gets imposed on finance ministers in election years? Because we've done only one term, for instance, in our case. You want a second term. And most MPs mm. will need additional resources in terms of projects, unplanned projects, unbudgeted projects. Mm -hmm. He suddenly finds out that if he did not do a primary school in a particular town, he will not win the elections in that town. So there's pressure coming from all angles. Mm. And your colleagues are going to tell you, do you want me to lose this election? And I was myself an MP. So with that kind of thing, you've got to say, but this was not budgeted for. And I think it's a discipline that we should try to do. And countries which have made it have also tried to uh, put that discipline on themselves. It is very important. Because just yesterday, we read the budget. Mm. By end of December, we would have passed an appropriation act. It means that parliament, the authority that passes law in this country, would have allocated a certain amount of money to each ministry to spend mm. for the 2020 year. Why would you allow everybody to overspend? You are, it's, it's illegal, fundamentally. So if you can't raise enough revenue, you, you cut your expenditure to not be too much higher than the revenue you raise. So you keep that gap in a certain margin. That's the deficit, right? I establish uh, an office mm. which was on daily basis matching expenditure with revenue mm -hmm. so that I'm not taken by surprise because the revenue is coming from various angles mm -hmm. through various accounts and the Minister of Finance I must follow it. Expenditure is also coming from various ministries and various institutions I must follow it. I want to match the two. So if the revenue is not coming I'll cut down the expenditure so that there would always be this but does it not depend balance. on the type of expenditure? So uh, let's assume revenue is not coming, but you spend the money on investment type things like tollable roads or building projects that can pay for themselves. Is that not better? So should we not look at what the money is spent on as against simply saying you are overspending? No. If, for instance, company A is coming out to do a toll road, it has nothing to do with my budget. It's a private sector investment. So you can encourage that kind of investment. It becomes your budget if the expenditure is coming from the government coffers. So you can encourage expenditure that is not on the government and is self-financing. I'm asking this because when you look at the uh, uh, Kenneth Riata's budget, when he realized in 2019 that his revenue wasn't going high, he cut his expenditure and cut capital expenditure. Yes. So his capital expenditure was about 44% of target. He cut it. And some people feel that if you don't spend on capital expenditure, because that's what has the potential to multiply. If, if you cut that, you are, you are killing yourself. You can reduce consumption expenditure. But if you cut capex, you are restricting the economy's ability to expand in the future. But what can you cut? You cannot cut what you are describing as expenditure because it's really the salaries and wages. Mm. And that is a constant you cannot touch. Mm. Can you have a situation where you do not pay public servants at the end of the month on the grounds that you are mm. trying to cut expenditure? You can't. So always that... So I inevitably you will cut the capital cut expenditure. Capital. That's how it comes, inevitably. 